Welcome to another video and uh, in this video I will uh, show you some uh, crucial options on uh, how to use MDACM and uh, at the end I will also show uh, some options how you can speed up your rebuild process of your rate set so if you're interested in that make sure to keep watching so in this video I'll be uh, covering uh, a few uh, different topics uh, if you're looking for something in, in uh, particular just uh, check the timestamps below and uh, you can then skip to uh, to any part you uh, might need uh, so what is a MDHDM? it's actually a, a command line tool and uh, it's used to create and manage software rate um, so basically you can create new rate sets and uh, if there's a failure you can also use MDHDM to um, replace a faulty drive so those are pretty uh, pretty nice uh, nice features and um, yeah I'll be using a, a VM that's set up with software rate 1 and um, yeah I've also got a video on how to install Ubuntu 22 with rate 1 so uh, if you're interested in that I'll link that uh, at the top now so when you're working with MDHDM um, there's a lot you can find online mostly if you're having issues uh, you can just search on Google and you'll find a lot of different ways on how to uh, solve any problems uh, but in this video I will go over the basics and uh, yeah how you can create or maybe adjust the rate set so uh, we'll get into that um, so a good place to uh, find a lot of information on uh, MDHDM is the uh, man page so let's uh, get into the man page and the HDM uh, there's a lot of information to be found um, but a very specific thing I would like to show you uh, there are different modes you can use with MDHDM um, mostly you will uh, be using assemble create uh, those are the two uh, you would need the most most so uh, those are the, the biggest options um, but with the options you can use either a uh, one letter uh, option so dash a for example or you can use a dash dash assemble and uh, yeah if you're just starting out with MDHDM I would just recommend to use the full word so uh, when you're typing the command it's always clear what you're gonna do and uh, that you won't be making any mistakes so uh, that's an important thing to uh, to uh, watch out for so to get started I'll show you what partitions I've currently got on my system so there are two drives SDH and SDB and those are my uh, operating system in RAID 1 and then I've also got uh, SDC and SDD and we'll be using that later on to uh, create a RAID set so when you're working with uh, RAID sets there's, uh, there's a few commands uh, that are very handy to be using uh, at first I would like to show you cut and proc MD step um, that way you can print all uh, rate devices that are active <coughs> currently in my system you will see that the uh, MD0 is uh, is active um, there's a lot of information you can see you can see that it's active that is rate 1 and behind that you will see SDB2 and SDH2 and those are the partitions that are used and also a good indicator uh, on the right you will see two of two and that means if all drives are available or not if one of two is there it means that one of the drives is missing and uh, that could indicate a failure of a drive so uh, you might want to investigate that so um, another one is MDHDM and then we will do detail and then we will specify our rate set <coughs> Oh, MD1 is not here, so MD0. Um, then you will really get all information of your rate set. Um, important things are the rate level, uh, how much uh, space is used of the of the array, and you will also see if it's clean the state. And uh, currently, it's uh, just a rate set that's working properly, so uh, the state is clean. And uh, if there are any issues, you would see that either is a drive removed or you see that state is set to faulty or degraded. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of issues you could find out uh, by checking the details of your uh, device. So to get started, I would like to show you uh, on how to create a new RAID set. So as I already showed you earlier, I've got 
SDC and SDD, and those are extra drives I've added, so uh, we can use that to create a new uh, RAID set. So first we will use NDHDM, and then we will specify the create option. You could also shorten it with the capital C, but we'll be using the full options here. Uh, we can then specify for both. Uh, that's actually to get more output, so it's really clear what the command's been doing. Uh, then we will specify uh, how we want to call the RAID set, and we've already got ND0, so let's do uh, ND1 here. Uh, then we will need to specify the level, and actually the RAID level we will do is uh, RAID1. After that, we will specify how many RAID devices we need, devices, and we will do two, and after that we can specify which drives you're going to use. And those are SDC and SDD. So this is basically the command you will be using to create a new RAID. So let's go ahead. And this is just a notification. We can just uh, continue. You'll then see that our array has been started. Um, so we can do cat proc MD step. And we'll then see that MD1 has been created. And uh, you'll also see that it's resyncing. And that's uh, because it's a RAID set with a mirror. Uh, you have different RAID levels, you have RAID 1, uh, 10, 5, or other levels that are mirroring data. Um, so when you uh, create a RAID set, they will need to initialize uh, if all data is present. And once the reset is finished, uh, it's fully operational. Um, before the resync has been finished, you can already use it. Uh, but the resync can yeah, put some load on your drive. So. I would advise not to use your drives uh, too much before the resync uh, has finished. So uh, that's actually how to create the uh, the RAID set. And after that, we want to be using we want to be um, creating a file system. So we will do uh, on the exe4 in this case. Let's create a file system. And after that, we will have to check the ID, the UUID that's been given, um, and. The, now you will see at the bottom MD1 has been given a UUID and yeah if we want to mount that we will need to um, configure that in our uh, fsdep file uh, so currently I'm on a virtual machine so copy pasting is uh, not really possible so I'll be using a few commands uh, in a row on how to uh, get the UUID so we will be grabbing MD1 and we will be using a wk print and then the second section and if you do that we will get the output of our uid and we would like to forward that to the slash etc fs tab file so when we now enter our fs tab we will just see at the bottom that the uid has been added um so actually um when it's forward to the to this uh, you'll see the quotes are still there make sure to remove those because quotes are not needed in uh, this file otherwise you will be uh, showing some errors so after uuid we will specify which location we will do slash home here uh, then we will need to specify the file system and that's xa4 uh, the options we will just use defaults and also error handling we will just be using default options you save and quit and then just to show you the before we now have our md1 but it's not mounted yet and when we do mount dash a and we check it again we see that it's mounted at slash home so that's basically how to create a rate set could get a file system on it and uh, yeah how to mount it so uh, yeah so welcome back guys um, in the meantime i've added an uh, extra drive um, so in the previous part we uh, created the software rate one and um, yeah we've mounted it to slash home and uh, i've now added uh, sde to the server and um, yeah that's actually the third uh, 50 gig drive um, so the next part i will be showing you how to um, how to manage your RAID set so you can remove a drive and add a new one. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing I would like to show you is we will just check the details 
of our ND device, and it's uh, that's the wrong option. We'll use D2, and we will then see that it's a RAID 1, it's clean, and there are two drives in it. Um, so if there would be a faulty drive, we can now use the manage option, and we would then specify which device we want to manage. So that's MD127, and then we will do uh, fail. And we'll then specify which drive we need to be marking uh, as fill and we will do SDD so you will now see that SDD is marked as uh, faulty in the RAID device and if we check the details you will see that it's faulty um, so first when it's set to faulty we can now safely remove it from the RAID set so we will use the manage option again and we will specify the RAID set and after that we will use remove and we'll do slash SDD. Now it's hot removed from uh, from the right set. So when we check our partitions, LSVOK, we will see that SDC is still uh, part of the right set and is still being mounted. It can be used. There's nothing uh, at all, uh, nothing going on. So uh, there are no issues. But it's just not complete, and uh, SDD has been removed. So we will now add another drive to our. Uh, to our RAID set. So how we do that, we would do manage again, and then we specify a RAID set, and we will then do add, and we will now, for example, do SDE to see that we can add a new drive. And when we check the details of our RAID again, you will now see that it's spare and rebuilding. Um, so when you add it, it will automatically start the rebuild process. And you can do proc and this tab also to see the recovery uh, process and uh, yeah actually that's being being done now and uh, there's nothing else you need to do so that's uh, that's pretty cool so that's like the biggest part on uh, how to replace a uh, drive on a uh, RAID set and uh, yeah there are a lot of other options but these are the, the most important ones you need to know and uh, I hope it was helpful so uh, if you think this is a, a nice video and it was helpful for you uh, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video and uh, yeah, I'll now uh, get into the last part and that's how to uh, trick your uh, RAID settings so we now see our, uh, our RAID array and uh, we see that it's uh, just above 5k a second with the recovery um, so there are actually two parameters uh, we will need to change to um, get that going again um, we will actually do an echo and then we will echo for example 200,000 so it's uh, quite a quite a speed proc and then sys dev, uh, dev rate and then we have the speed min and max first we'll do the min and after that we will also change the max speed to uh, 200k and now when we look we're already at 76k 124k you we'll also see that at the beginning the finish time would be 112 minutes then it was eight minutes now it's four and uh, actually now it's over 200k already so um, in two minutes it's already finished so this is a pretty nice way to uh, speed up your rate set um, by default um, some values can prevent the rate set from resyncing fast um, so if you notice that your resync is not going too fast uh, you might want to add the minimum and the maximum speed and um, actually in order to um, to get those back to the normal values you can just do a reboot on your server and the values will then be uh, be placed back to uh, to default so that's uh, that's pretty nice so I really hope uh, this video was helpful for you and uh, yeah that uh, you can have learned something uh, from this. So uh, yeah, if you liked the video, please consider subscribing to my channel and uh, like the video. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.